Well, good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> We're continuing to work on an omnibus appropriation bill and a, a COVID relief bill. Um, my view, and I think it's a view shared by literally everybody on both sides of the aisle, we can't leave without doing a COVID bill. And the country needs it. We have an agreement that we need to do this. Uh, you've been following the discussions back and forth about how to put the package together. It remains my view that we ought to pass what we can agree on. And I think that's a pretty broad area that includes um, PPP, vaccine delivery, additional assistance to health care providers, and a variety of other things that are not uh, controversial. The two big items that you've been writing about are liability protection and state and local government. Let me say this about liability protection. This is not just about businesses. It's about the universities. It's about charities and others who see this developing epidemic of lawsuits headed their way. And it's not total immunity. It wouldn't protect you if you were grossly negligent or engaged in intentional misbehavior. But if you weren't, this is a one-time liability relief related to a once in a hundred year uh, pandemic that kicks in for a period of time and then goes away. We can't get the economy back to normal if we have an epidemic of lawsuits on the heels of the pandemic. It simply won't make it possible for us to get back to normal. With regard to state and local, a lot of members on our side look at the various states that received the $150 billion we did in the CARES Act and wonder if there's a demonstrable need. So what's the way forward? We know the new administration is going to be asking for another package. What I recommend is we set aside liability and set aside state and local and pass those things that we can agree on, knowing full well we'll be back at this after the first of the year. We, uh, <clears throat> as the leader pointed out, have had a fairly consistent position among Republicans for some time, and that is that we need a targeted, fiscally responsible approach to coronavirus relief. And the Speaker, uh, Pelosi, has uh, said consistently up until this last week that they needed to uh, started out, I think, $3.4 trillion, then it was like $2.4 trillion, and now uh, all of a sudden she's okay with a smaller package because uh, they're going to address this next year. I'm um, like, where has this view been for the last seven months when we've been trying, as the leader pointed out, to get those things across the finish line that we all agree with? And uh, it is absolutely true that there are uh, a series of things that on which there's bipartisan agreement, um, certainly liability protection, state and local, that's not the case. And uh, I would argue, as he did, that there are lots of states around the country um, that are in a pretty good condition fiscally right now. Um, mine would be one of those. And uh, there are a lot of our members who have big reservations about borrowing money to, uh, to basically bail out uh, a few states who um, maybe for, uh, maybe because of their own actions are in a in a bad fiscal situation. So I think the important thing here is that we focus on that range of issues on which there is broad agreement. And clearly that is uh, money for vaccine, distribution of the vaccines, PPP, small businesses, uh, people who are unemployed, extension of some of those programs. And I think we could get a deal and tie it into, a let it ride on the uh, year end budget deal and do something really meaningful for the American people. One thing that I would argue needs to be on that is a uh, provision that prevents states from taxing uh, health care providers, health care workers like doctors and nurses who go across state lines to provide their services. That is a, an act of goodwill. They shouldn't be faced with a surprise tax bill. Um, and I think there ought to be a provision in this legislation that makes it clear 
that people like that or people who are frankly working remotely and have tax consequences as a result of that don't get hit with a big fat tax bill by some state. Uh, New York is a good case in point and I would hope that um, we could get that done and I think we can if uh, Senator Schumer who uh, of course represents the state of New York and I'd said the state of New York is one of the biggest culprits when it comes to taxing people who work mobily if, um, if he would back down and allow this to be included in this package it would be of immense help to not just those uh, uh, healthcare workers who are traveling across state lines to assist uh, during the pandemic, but also a lot of other uh, workers who are working remotely right now and are going to be faced with a big tax bill as a result of that. That shouldn't be uh, allowed and it should be part of, uh, part of this uh, coronavirus relief bill that we move through the Congress. I, I would say on the issues that Senator Thune mentioned, uh, vaccine uh, distribution, continuing to fund the vaccine effort, businesses big and small, restaurants to airlines, uh, PPP, uh, unemployment that's about to run out, all of those efforts will be dramatically impacted if we act now. My view expressed a week ago, and still my view, is that $900 billion right now will do more good than $2 trillion would do in April. If we, we have three or four tough months in front of us, all of those things I just mentioned are challenged during that period of time. If we mitigate the problems, uh, we'll have, a, we'll be a lot better off uh, in the spring than if we just let the problems develop. Uh, and I think anybody who thinks if we let this moment pass that we'd have another bill before, say, late March, uh, hasn't spent much time around this building. We need to do this, we need to do it now. We don't need to fight right now about what we can't agree on. We need to agree on what we can agree on and move forward. Uh, and it'll be some of the best money we spend if we spend it now rather than trying to recover from all of the things that we didn't uh, stand up and be helpful about because the Congress couldn't figure out how to move forward with things we know need to be done and spend our time instead deciding, just like we've done on this issue up till now, uh, that, well, we'd rather not have anything if we can't get everything. Uh, finally, the other side has said, well, maybe it's not two and a half trillion, maybe it's not three and a half trillion, maybe it's less than a trillion, but it's pretty darn late in the day to figure out that a trillion you can get is better than three trillion that you can't get. So we've heard a lot about the COVID relief package and the discussions that are ongoing, and I do continue to hear from Iowans as well on the importance of getting something done. Uh, we know that our, our small businesses are hurting. We have child care centers that are closing. We really need to step in as Congress and make sure we are supporting our constituents uh, the best we can. We do have a targeted relief bill that has been pre presented, and we also have those that are working uh, on the bipartisan working group. Regardless of, of how we end up getting this done, I do think that it is important that we get this done. Um, so we'll continue to work on that. I encourage our Democratic friends to come back to the table, work with us on these issues, and let's get this deal done before the end of the year. Um, next, I do want to address an issue that has plagued us through the coronavirus, and that is disruption through our supply chain and making sure that we have not only the pharmaceuticals but the PPE necessary here in the United States to protect our frontline workers, our healthcare workers, and others. And I have recently introduced a bill called the Mobilize America Act, which would provide incentive for manufacturers to develop those pharmaceuticals and those uh, protective pieces of equipment, medical equipment, medical supplies here in the United States. And I do encourage and look forward to working with Democrats and Republicans on this piece of legislation. And just on a, a final lighthearted note this weekend, we do have a football game coming up on Saturday. It is what is known as America's Game. It will be the football game between the United States Naval Academy. 
Todd, and uh, the United States Military Academy at West Point. And I would remind everybody that regardless of the outcome of Saturday's game, Every last one of those young men that will be out on that field are willing to step up and give their life for freedom and for our great nation. So regardless of the outcome, we will all be winners. God bless. Well, Joni, that was gracious and magnanimous. Uh, but as a graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy, I do have to say, go Navy, beat Army, okay? <laughs> uh, look forward to that game. Um, Look, as we approach year's end, there's a lot of important business uh, still to be uh, attended to, as my colleagues indicated. Most importantly, we need to pass a coronavirus relief package. I've been hearing from months from Hoosiers about the importance of getting this done. I think it was helpful that a number of my colleagues came together in a bipartisan fashion and put forward a proposal giving us some traction now. So I'm optimistic that we're going to pass this package and provide the relief that Hoosiers and other Americans need before year's end uh, and look forward to doing everything I can to make sure that happens. Uh, number two, we need to make sure we fund the essential services of our federal government to maintain faith in our government officials, to maintain faith in our institutions, especially in the midst of a global pandemic and an economic downturn. And frankly, no one sent any of us here uh, to shut government down, so uh, I'm optimistic we can come to terms on that front as well. And then lastly, as uh, a U.S. Marine, I think it's essential that we make sure that we pass a defense authorization bill uh, to, uh, to fund our men and women in uniform and all that they do for us, and also to make sure that we keep the American people safe. So looking forward to a productive couple of weeks here as we approach uh, the, the holidays. And uh, uh, I do have a measure of optimism, uh, even amidst uh, some of the political challenges we faced in recent months and years, that uh, this will be a productive couple of weeks ahead. This has become a weekly ritual. Um, the <clears throat> Electoral College is going to meet on the 14th and cast a vote. And we're going to have a swearing in of the next president on the 20th of January. Why don't we concentrate on what we have to do the next two weeks? Let me say again, leaving here without a COVID relief package cannot happen. We have to get that done. I think both sides fully understand that. We also are going to continue to confirm uh, people on the executive calendar, both to essential uh, agencies or commissions like the Federal Election Commission tomorrow, the FCC, and some remaining uh, federal district judges. So I want to concentrate on the next uh, two weeks, and the period beyond that will take care of itself. So yeah. on those next two weeks, I just want to clarify something you said earlier. You've been talking about the importance of the liability protection since July, I think. Mm -hmm. If that's not something that can be broadly agreed to in the next two weeks, would you put a COVID relief bill on the floor that does not have that in it? Well, I'm sure you were carefully listening a while ago. I have a suggestion to make, which is that the two most contentious items be set aside Liability protection, we all know, with all due respect to our colleagues on the other side, they are almost like a wholly owned subsidiary of the plaintiff's bar. So any kind of liability relief, they instinctively, like a Pavlovian response, object to. We have some very serious questions about the actual need of additional state and local assistance. So what I've suggested to them internally and suggest to you publicly why don't we set aside the two obviously most contentious issues? We know we're going to be confronted with another request after the first of the year. We'll live to fight those another day and pass the things that we agree on. So yeah. in, the midst, in the midst of the pandemic, some of your Republican colleagues are raising concerns that Biden's nominee to head HHS doesn't have much of a professional health background and spent a lot of his time filing lawsuits mm. in the Trump administration in California. What's your all the discussion about who may next come, come next in the cabinet 
is something I'm not prepared to address yet. We've got two weeks of important business left to do, and that's where I'm going to concentrate my time. Yeah. You're talking about the defense bill? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, let me say, if, if the, we haven't failed to pass the, <clears throat> the NDAA for 60 years, uh, if it comes over from the House, obviously I'm going to put it on the floor, and it's my intention to vote for it. Yeah. Well, we don't, we don't know for sure whether the bill will be vetoed or not. I, I feel like I have a responsibility to put the NDAA on the floor, and I, as I said, I intend to, to vote for it. Thanks a lot, everyone.